Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover Amazon S3. Okay, so what is Amazon S3? Amazon S3, which stands for Simple Storage Service, is a storage service that allows enterprises and individuals to simply store and protect their data. Think of S3 as having, you know, an unlimited data storage place in the cloud. So you actually don't need to go and buy physical uh, servers or buy uh, storage devices. You can just upload the data to S3 directly. And what we're going to show you as well is that we're going to use Amazon SageMaker coupled with S3 to train our machine learning models. So Amazon SageMaker requires us to upload the data to S3. And after actually the model is trained, we are going to upload the model artifacts as well to S3. And that's why I'm covering S3 here in this lecture, because we plan to use it throughout the entire course. So Amazon S3 offers numerous enhanced features, such as scalability. It's, um, it's highly available, so it offers data availability, security, and performance. And Amazon, Amazon S3 is actually very easy to use. And I'm going to show you guys as well how to create these buckets and upload the data to it. It's very, very simple and very intuitive. And what's really powerful about it too, that it allows uh, enterprises to organize their data and configure finely tuned access controls. So you can actually say, I need this specific team members within this specific um, company and to have specific certain levels of access to a certain buckets. So you can actually fine tune these access controls so nobody you know, can go and just access your, your data. And Amazon S3 is extremely durable. And we call it like 11 nines, which is 99.9999%. And Amazon S3 is 99.9% .9 available. Simply put, you can't just go and let's say train an AI and ML model and they will tell you, no, no, the Amazon S3 is down this time. You know, like I actually haven't seen it you know, I've been using SageMaker for um, for quite a while, and I've never seen we have an issue with, with S3 or, or having S3 being not available. Okay, all right, so let's keep going. So Amazon S3 is built to be extremely simple and robust, and it allows customers to store and organize their data in what we call it buckets or directories. And you will see this kind of um, logo a lot, okay? You will find that, again, think of buckets as different directories, and we can create folders within these directories. And think of it again as you're, as you're uploading data to your hard drive. And I'm gonna show you right now a demo after uh, these couple of slides. And the bucket is a container for objects stored in Amazon S3, and every object is contained in a bucket. And each of these buckets will have a global, universal, unique name. Simply put, you can't have the same bucket name basically shared by, by somebody else. So if you use it, that's it. It will be unique, global, and nobody will have the exact same name as you. And you can store an infinite amount of data basically in the bucket. And each object within the bucket is limited to five terabytes of data, okay? But within the bucket, you, you literally have unlimited storage technically. And uh, let's take a look at an example. So if you have an object, let's say images, uh, mycat.jpg, and this object is stored in SageMaker practical bucket, you can use this URL to access your bucket simply. So you can say the bucket will be SageMaker practical, okay? This will be the path to, to your data, .s3.amazonaws.com, and then within, within it, then you will have your data, which is images, that would be the folder that contains my image, which is a single image, my cat. And once you have that, then you can, you can feed in that path to SageMaker. So you'll be able to actually retrieve that data and train your model accordingly. And you can also upload, if you wanted, the testing data too. So you'll be able to test your model um, by, by downloading data from S3. All right, okay. So let's take a look at AWS S3 storage tiers. So Amazon S3 offers a range of what we call it storage classes. Again, as you upload data to S3, and as you keep data in S3, there are charges associated with it, okay? So you need to be smart about selecting which storage class you're targeting. So the first class is what we call it S3 standard. 
And this one works well with storage that is general purpose and frequently accessed. So if you are accessing data in S3 frequently, you need to select the S3 standard type. The second type is what we call it sta S3 standard, um, I'm sorry, intelligent tiering. And that one works well with data that has varying access patterns. For example, I might, you know, like access it a little bit um, more frequent, let's say, uh, within a week. And then afterwards, I'm just going to leave the data maybe like staying there for maybe a month without accessing. So when, if you have changing access patterns, then it's better to use S3 intelligent tiering. The third category, and I kind of group these two together, which is the S3 standard infrequent access and S3 one zone infrequent access. And they are simply used for long lived but less frequently accessed data. Simply put, if you just have data that you wanted to store and you just gonna, you're not going to be accessing it for a while. So you will basically select these two. And S3 one, the one zone is simply you just have your data available only in one zone. And then we have the last category, which is Amazon S3 Glacier. And Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive, that's when you have an extremely long-term archive data and you just want to store it there, like, you know, for example, like, a, like medical information, for example, about, let's say, customers. You wanted to store that data, you're not planning to access it anytime soon, you just save it, archive it, and that charge obviously will be way less compared to the S3 standard if you're frequently accessing your data. So Amazon S3 as well offers the ability to change the storage tiers throughout what we call the data life cycle by setting a life cycle policy. For example, I can say, I can set a policy to a specific bucket. For example, I can say, okay, I want this bucket to be general initially. And then afterwards, maybe after a month, I want to change it to have to become infrequent access and then after maybe like a couple of months I can set it to become glacier and archive it afterwards okay so you can simply set a life cycle policy that can change the storage tiers throughout the data life cycle for you okay which is a very handy feature to have all right so here are a, a summary kind of a table summary for uh, the different S3 storage tiers so first, you will find the frequently accessed. Don't worry about like memorizing any, any of that information. Actually, we're not going to be using any, any of these throughout the course. I just want to primarily use the S3 standard. I just want you guys to know what's out there, uh, especially that we're going to use S3 frequently throughout the course. So the S3 standard, this one, again, can be used primarily for frequently accessed. Here we have the intelligent tiering. That's when there is a changing patterns in there. And then we have the S3 standard um, IA and the S3 one zone infrequently accessed as well. And these are infrequently accessed category. And you have the Glacier and Glacier Deep Archive. And these are for long-term uh, data that you're just gonna go and forget about. So let's cover the here. So you'll find that all of them are actually designed for durability. So again, Amazon guarantees for you that you, the data, your data is durable for 99.999% across all the different tiers. They are designed for availability as well. Here for availability zones, you find that all of them are, um, are available at equals to or greater than three availability zones, except for S3 one zone, because it's one zone. So it's only available in one zone. So let's cover the minimum storage duration charge. So you will notice that for the S3 intelligent tiering, and for the infrequently accessed, they are 30 days. And for the archived here, the S3 Glacier, talking about 90 days. And for the S3 Glacier Deep Archive is 180 days. For the retrieval fee, you will find that here, all of these are within the infrequently accessed and for the archived per, are per GB retrieved. And for the latency, you will find that the first byte latency, all of these are within milliseconds. However, here, because you are you're assuming that we're storing that data for a prolonged period of time, so you're not going to be like requesting them urgently per se. So it will take minutes or hours to retrieve that data. And for the S3 Glacier Deep Archive, it can take up to a couple of hours to actually retrieve your data. And for the storage type and lifecycle transitions, all of them here 
are um, you can choose the life cycle transitions across all of them and all of them support object basically based storage type for all the uh, different uh, storage tiers okay all right so let's take a look at amazon s3 and see how can we create a bucket and upload data to s3 so let's go ahead to our uh, aws management console so here i have my console and you can simply go ahead here and just search for s3 so you will find that here i have s3 you can just click on it and it's actually really easy and very simple and intuitive to create buckets and, and deal with uh, with s3 so let's take a look at it first here you can simply go ahead and select create a bucket so you can click on that here you need to give it a bucket name so i will generally going to give it SageMaker dash practical okay you can select the regions so here you can select whatever region you are looking at so here i'm just going to stick with U us east ohio or us east 2 and here you need to specify what what is the access for this specific bucket who will be able to access that so what uh, aws recommends is that you need to block all public access first so it's just going to say okay this bucket we're going to be blocked nobody will be able to access it except for or except through what we call the access control list or acls so we're going to set bucket policies we're going to say who exactly within our organization will be able to access these buckets will be able to have read access or write access and so on so here the just leave it as is block all public access and you'll be simply able to create a bucket just click um, click on create bucket and here we go so now i have stage maker practical bucket it's defined in us east in ohio region and that's it so if you click on your bucket here you will be able to upload data directly to it so you can first you can create a folder if you want or you can upload data directly to your bucket so i'm going to go ahead and create a folder i'm going to call it for example xg boost and generally speaking what we're going to be doing going to be defining a bucket followed by here um, like think of it as a kind of a folder or subfolder for each of the algorithms so here i'm going to say okay xg boost and here you can specify the encryption don't worry about the encryption here uh, we're just going to set it to none for now so we're just going to click save so now i've created kind of a folder within my bucket if you click on it you will be able to again if you want to create another folder so maybe i'm going to upload the training data to a folder called train so i'm going to call it train again don't worry about the encryption here click save and you'll be able to actually open that and maybe upload data directly to it so i can say okay please go ahead and add files and for example for the our uh, first case study i will be able to select our data which is a salary information here that's my csv file so i'm just going to select that click open here we go you can click upload and it will take a little bit of time and here we go so now we have uploaded our simply salary.csv within our bucket which is SageMaker practical and these are our folders xg boost and there is train and here i have my data so now i can actually specify that path to uh, um, when i train my model within SageMaker. i just want to point to this data so i'll be able to retrieve that data when i train my model in SageMaker. okay all right so that's a quick very brief demo for s3 please note that there are a, a lot of details when it comes to all of these services there are tons of features and, and tons of ins and outs in it i just wanted to give you exactly what you needed to train the ai and machine learning models because again this course is not an aws uh, cloud course or um, or um, th the primary objective here is to teach you SageMaker and how to interact with other services such as s3 and ec2 kind of with, with minimum uh, requirements okay so that's it that's all what i have for this lecture i hope you guys enjoyed it in the next lecture i'm going to cover amazon elastic compute cloud or ec2 for short please stay tuned and please enjoy aws SageMaker practical course and i will see you guys in the next lecture